All right, guys. It's well blending. Let's talk. Um, let's say you want to start a business. You have some cash. You want to start a business. You don't know what kind of business you want to start. And you also have bad credit. Well, I'm going to tell you what kind of business to start. Because this is one I'm starting. Even though I already had a media company. I've had this media company for some time now. About a year and a half. I'm going to show you what type of business to start. And it's not a media company. What you're going to start is a holding company. That's a company that you don't even want to do business with the general public. But it's the starting point for your organization. You're going to start a holding company. I uh, recommend with anonymity where nobody knows you own it. And um, I have a company that could do it for you. So it's not going to be one of those complicated things you got to go to read and follow directions. None of that. But if you have five grand or more and you have bad credit but you want to start a company, you're going to start a holding company. It's just going to hold money and it's going to own your operating companies. That's the only job of the holding company. And it's going to pay you. It's the only company that is, you're actually going to get a check from as an employee. And it's going to own several other companies, operating companies, down the line as you learn what you want to do. You'll have the opportunity to open up sectors or sister companies or baby companies of this holding company. So, again, you got bad credit. Now, the company I'm working with or going to work with, um, they're not only going to set up this company for you, but they're going to do all the work to get the business credit for you. And they're going to guarantee you a minimum of 20000 in spendable corporate credit without a signing, meaning you don't have to use your social or nothing to back it up. But that's the minimum. There's a possibility to get more. But you always want to think in terms of worst case scenario, you only got 20. Okay, you finally get this 10 grand. What you're going to do is put a small amount on another company that I work with on fixing your credit. It should cost less than $600, even if it takes 12 months. A lot of these comp repair, credit repair companies, they'll drag it out charge you 100 a month even if it takes a whole year so this company charges you one flat rate and they just do all the work for you so depending on what the special is i've got it as low as 400 dollars for myself for two people so if you're a couple or mom and dad or dad and son whatever i don't know if they still got the two people special but that's as low as i got it it was about less than $500 for me and my brother. So you go into credit repair, small amount of this money, remember you got 20. You gotta take, once your credit is right, and of course you're gonna keep your job or whatever revenue stream you got to show how much you make a year. Now, once your credit is up, it usually takes four to six months at the latest. Once your credit is up, now you have going to take a portion of that money, put it in your personal account two to three months before you buy, and you're going to guess what I'm going to tell you, you're going to buy a piece of real estate. And the piece of real estate is not just for a home. I think people think that I'm just trying to get them into a home. No, it's not, it's not about that. It's about leverage. Real estate gives you leverage to have a higher buying ability later. So if you're really good with this economy plummeting in this pandemic, there's going to be a lot of deals on the table. Not now, but in six months. So the sooner you get started on this, you'll be ready when this whole pandemic is hopefully over. So you 
you got your credit worked on. Now you got money, you're gonna take about five grand, it's gonna be at least 3%, maybe less with this economy. So about five grand you put in your personal account because they're gonna to wanna to see it in your personal business account to purchase the property. So now your job qualifies you for say 100,000. I think you usually gotta make at least 30,000 a year, you'll get probably a $100,000 loan. And um, yeah, so you purchase this property. If you're really crafty, you'll get when this downturn happens, we might even start seeing two families for the price of one. That's my goal. So now you go buy that, you live on one floor, and then you rent the other floor. I'm willing to work with people if they don't want to manage the property themselves and start a property management company as well. So I personally want to start a property management company down the line. After transportation, after putting a media company under my holding company, I eventually want to get into real estate myself and probably property management, and then I'm done. My plate is full. And I could just literally just go around building assets or buying more assets, which is probably more property. I'm gonna have somebody eventually run the transportation business so I don't have to do the day-to-day. -day. Cause you wanna have these companies like where they're, if you die or if you're in a hospital, they're still running. I wanna get the right person in to get actually knows about camera equipment and all that extra technical stuff to run my media company. And later on, before I hopefully anything happens to me, I plan on slowly introducing more people to this channel. So now you'll get used to not seeing my face representing Chennai Business, but you'll finally see other faces. Now I can move away and start working on other things. You see what I'm saying? Which is mainly real estate. I only want to focus on the real estate deals. So I just want somebody to come in, step in. Now they're running the media company. I'm going to have my input on the media company always. I'm probably going to still do videos, you know, but I'll have them more, you know, it'll be, you know, I'll probably have a nice commercial in the beginning and you'll see the channel progress when this happens so I won't even really have to tell you you'll be like hey hey you got, you got some stuff going on in there it's a nice little fun introduction you know what I mean but that'll be down the line it's not necessary now the transportation company hopefully I'll have three to five guys on the road all the time bringing their money, bringing their money after this pandemic. Um, my holding company will start slowly buying one vehicle at a time as I'm looking for new property. So this is just some things you could do. Now, let's say you finally figure out what you want to do. Okay, um, you're a woman, you want to do a beauty salon. You don't know nothing about doing a beauty salon, but you hired the right person that can run it. Okay. <clears throat> what we do is remember, you have a holding company. Your holding company is going to set up. We go to the same people if we need to, or maybe different people, depending on what deals they offer. We set up a operating company under your holding company for the beauty salon. And if you want to bring in partners, you probably want to go to LLC. It just makes it easier for partnerships. So now you can have three partners and say, let's say you brought me in a deal, 10% owner to man, help you manage some things. You can have four people under that LLC, but your part of the partnership is not in your name. You see what I'm saying? It's going to be under your holding company. So say it's Tiffany Holdings, you're not gonna put your name, Tiffany, on the contract for the new business. You're gonna put Tiffany Holdings and then your separate partners. Let's say I come in a deal, I'll have my holding company name 
not my real name. So we're all in partnership, but we have our separate holding companies as partners of this beauty salon. That's how you want to do it. So if thing goes wrong with a partner, your holding company segregates you in a way from them messing with your money. And if the partner does something wrong, he'll be liable for just his piece of the business. This is how I'm going to structure all my companies that I do business with other people. I'm going to have my holding company partner with them. I'm not going to personally partner with them. So that's not the holding company doing business with anybody. It's just a partner of this new business. that makes sense I'm sorry I'm just looking at the lighting because it's it's blurred up there so yes yeah, so I'm going to structure all my deals where my my holding company will be a partner on other co people's companies and then I may have my one property in Connecticut under that holding company but when I start getting into multi-families and let's say commercial I'm going to start a whole new holding company in Delaware. And there's reason why you probably want to put it in Delaware. You got to talk to a CPA or accountant. But that could be a whole other video. But once you start getting big and doing big properties, you want to go to Delaware. And I think their commercial banks are rather see Delaware than Nevada or Wyoming. I think that's one of the reasons, if you're wondering. Because you're going to be start needing to borrow higher and more amounts of money to keep this thing growing. And then the, what you could set it up so that now your Delaware holding company is actually owned by your Wyoming holding company. Because you could set it up as a partnership. So you and another person, you and your holding company could actually own the Delaware holding company and you might want to structure it that way where it's you and your holding company so that because they're going to want to see a name if you go to sell this because this is the holding company i'm probably going to sell i'm never going to sell my original holding company because that's what's building me credit that's what's going to hold my original home that's what's going to hold my vehicles all my operating companies my real estate empire i want to build separately on my commercial and multifamily. I'm still gonna have single families in my main holding company, but a part of me feels like I wanna build a commercial, you know, a big commercial and multifamily corporation that's holding all these assets that I may wanna sell one day. That's what I, the real reason why I think I wanna do it. Because I may want to sell and get out because you got to remember I still got all this stuff going on over here with my first holding company and all these operating companies and partnerships so that alone could get you rich the first holding company with just the three businesses and real estate could get me rich but me thinking ahead me thinking greedy once the money's right I'm gonna start a whole new holding company and start going after multifamily commercial after this whole pandemic is over commercial and multifamilies are going to be dirt cheap I'm saying in a, probably about six months to a year you're going to save prices on commercial and because people lost their companies so the property is going to be dirt cheap I think well into a year we're going to see properties drop so it's a good time to start buying up things. Like if I were to, if if I were to buy a hotel, I would put it under that Delaware holding company. Because a hotel is something you may want to sell, you know you're gonna get lots of money for it. And you might even want to go brand it. You know. If I had a hotel, a strip mall, and then uh let's say a four family. I'll put all those under the Delaware holding company, not directly, but separate LLCs owned by 
the hotel will get its own LLC by itself, owned by the Delaware Holding Company, which in turn is in partnership with my original holding company and myself. They want to see a name, so. And you can have this set up so it's anonymity, even in Delaware, where they don't even know my actual, they don't see my actual name when they look up the Delaware holding company. They'll see my holding company name and then they'll see my CPA or lawyer's name because that's how we set it up and then he transferred ownership to me. So nobody's not going to know I own none of this stuff. So once I'm rich and people start wondering, where is this dude? What happened to him? I'm, you'll know that, okay, he might have pulled that off. If I get to the point in life where I'm only doing videos, you know I pulled this off. That's probably the best way to find out. Like, if you don't see me driving anymore, I'm not talking about Uber or Lyft or side hustles or jobs. That I means I accomplished what I'm set out to do. I built my two holding companies. And those two holding companies, well, I don't even have to put the two because one owns the other. I can put my first holding company in a living trust and give my daughter power so that if something happens to me, she's completely taken care of, her family's taken care of, and I can sleep at night and go on an island with young women and then still do videos. I'll still do videos on these vacations or trips that I plan on taking in this future world I got. But I just want to inspire you guys to keep thinking about business. And if you want to do one of these holding companies, it's not necessarily a bad time to get started. It's the best time to get money, especially if you've got this, uh, this new stimulus business money. They're giving out this 10 grand through SBA. If you get that, contact me. Let's sit down and talk about it. Let's set up something. If we only do the, uh, we can literally set up the holding company for half of that money and you could take the other half and I would say sit on that too but you have the freedom to go spend it have a party whatever because you know you're building this over here so something to think about my information is below subscribe like and contact oh sorry subscribe like and comment and I will catch you guys in the next one.